and in the Lord's Supper. So I start out with the King James Version of Psalms 37, 23 through 24. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And I want to talk today about the steps of a good man. The steps of a good man. I had so many things. I had a step in the name of love. Amen. I had watch your step. Watch what you stepping in. Amen. You have to be careful how you step out. Amen. But God simplified it and said the steps of a good man. A lot of people look for good men. I hear women all the time talking about, ain't no more good men out there. Sometimes they say, all I need is a good man. Amen. And a lot of times people like to describe their fathers and their husbands as good men. Amen. But I don't want to leave out the good woman and the good woman, amen, because when we talk about the steps of a good man, we're not just talking genderly about a man, but we're talking about human man, the species as a, as a whole, male and female alike. And we want to say and see that the steps of a good man, a good man is described by God and in his words differently than a good man as we know. We would simply say that a good man holds a good job and provides for his family and he's faithful to his wife and he's a role model to his kids and we would say that that marks a good man but as we study today we're going to see that a good man and a woman has to carry a much deeper and a, and a, a much more uh, 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 pertinent a more important role in God than just those characteristics that we give him or her. A good man, first of all, has directions, which means he's instructed where to go and when to go. And a good man doesn't stop with just directions, but then it goes into the direction in which a good man or a good woman goes. Amen, somebody. So we have to see now, are we really good men and women according to the word of God? We have to listen today to what God says about a good man and a good woman. In Proverbs 16 and 9, it says, in their hearts, humans, they plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Amen, somebody. Amen. And it's good that we understand that our heart has to be a good heart. That's why we say a lot of times that we ask God to examine our heart or create in us a clean heart because your plans come from your heart. And if a man doesn't have a good heart, he doesn't have good plans. And a lot of people would say, on this world, if you was to take a survey, the majority of people hard would plan to make good money. But that does not necessarily mean that that's a good plan because what are the necessary steps to make good money? A drug dealer heart says that I plan to make good money. But because he doesn't have a right heart, he doesn't care about the families that he destroyed while he makes good money. So a good-hearted person has good plans. And after you make these good plans, then God establishes your steps that you make in order for your plans to be carried out. Now the good thing about this is that God establishment sometimes overrules our plans. Because sometimes we plan things that God reestablishes. Does that make sense? 
Sometimes we play in one career, but God takes us into another. Amen. Sometimes we plan to be in one income or category while God takes us into another. A lot of times I've listened to pro athletes talk about how they thought that they would be multi-millionaires, but because of one incident on the field, or because of one incident, the decision that, that was made about them, instead of being in the pros, they somewhere working a nine to five, but, somebody say but, but they're saved. Yeah. And they go on to say, but if I were still in the pros, I probably would be dead now. Uh -huh. Or I probably would be a cocaine addict. Or I probably would be this or that. In other words, they began to realize that God's establishment was greater than their plan. Uh -huh. Does it make sense yet? Yeah. Uh -huh. So in other words, they became a good man in God's eye when they began to trust him and follow the path that he has for them. Amen. In other words, we have to understand as God's people that we can't always go a step where we want to go and step. Sometimes when you get beat up by people and things don't go your way, the first thing you want to do is get out of dodge. You think your pastor had laid up and thought about how easy it would be for me to go and pursue another career. To take all my skills that God has given me and go build somewhere else and go principle somewhere else and go do something somewhere else and let all these worries and troubles be somebody else's worries and troubles. But at the end of the day, when it all boils down, I cannot decide where I step as a good man. But I have to step according to what God says I have to step. Does that make sense yet? God is waiting for a lot of people to change the direction of their steps. Because a lot of people have made worldly decisions and have become worldly. And God is still calling them to make a different step. Job helps me in this point. In Job 14 verses 15 and 17, he says, you call, you will call and I will answer you. You belong for the creature that your hands have made. Now this is some deep stuff. Job says it comes a time when God misses when God longs for the person, the creature that he made, he calls for that person to come back to him, to get back in step with him. God said, I made you. Mark Twain said something that was pretty neat. He said that there's two important days in a person's life. The day that he was born and the day he realizes why he was born. Amen, somebody. Amen. Which says that it comes a time when the person that God created, he longs for that creation. Yeah. He misses that creation. And he began to call that creation back unto him. And although that creation may be up into stuff, may be prostituting or pimping, may be out drugging or clubbing, might be out fornicating or shacking. The creation may even be in homosexuality, but the word says that it comes a time when God began to long for who and what he created and he began to call that person yeah. back to him. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is when a so-called good man becomes better because Job said you will call and I will answer. You will long for the creature your hands have made. Surely then, listen to this. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sins. When God called me out of what I was in, and I answered the call, he forgot everything I had done prior to the call. But he began to pay very close attention to every step I made after the call. Even to the point that Job is saying that God is even counting the steps that you make. Which means that when somebody is counting something, that means every time you make one, they are aware of 
what you made. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Every step that you make, God is attentive to it. Don't care nothing about what you used to do. I don't care what kind of life you live. He said, if I call you and you answer, all I'm concerned about now are the steps that you make. That's all he's concerned about. Now, this encourages me. Because when I begin to step this way and I think this is how things are supposed to happen, and they don't happen, then I have to go back and rethink and say, well, wait a minute. But God is counting every step I make. He's in control. So if this is not working out, well, then let me just stay on the path of God and let him work out for me what he has for me. Does that make sense yet? Watch this. Surely then you will count my steps, but not keep track of my sin. My offenses will be sealed up in a bag, and you will cover over my sins. In other words, God is not focused on where we've been anymore, but he's focused on where we're going. Anybody still there? Psalm 17, 4 through 6. Though people try to bribe me, I have kept myself from the ways of the valley. In other words, people tempt you to act a certain way and be a certain way and do things that you don't want to do. People make living saved for God hard. Why? Because it's people that tell you to do things that you don't want to do with. People put you under pressure to do things that you don't want to do. God bless saved men that's got to be dealing with and talking to harsh women. Why? Because these women have put, will put pressure on the flesh to make steps that's not in accordance with God. God bless the women and girls that's trying to live saved, but they tied up with harsh men. Why? Because these men are going to pressure them to make steps and go ways that are opposite of God. If I could wake everybody up and say one thing to them today, this is what I would say. Judge yourself. Am I a good man or woman? What judges you? What, based on what statutes, what principles are you judging me on? Am I walking in the steps or in the way of the Lord? from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. I have kept myself from the ways of the violent through what your lips have commanded. My steps have held to your paths. My steps have stayed on the path in which you laid out for me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get off my step for Mary Ann. I didn't get off my path for John Boy. But I stayed the course for you, God. Therefore, I am a good man and I am a good woman. How do I know this? Because my steps have been ordered by you, and I am following the order of the Lord. Why, 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 why even determine good and evil? Why? Where did it come from? Because judgment is based on good and evil. And all of us have to be judged. But the Lord says, before I judge you, judge yourself. And you ask yourself, am I a good woman? Am I a good man? Yes, Lord, I'm a good man. How, he asked. If you, not, if you have not stepped in the name of love, which means if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. 
My, my steps have held to your path. My feet have not stumbled. I, 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 I'm not stumbling on, I'm not stumbling on what you're asking me to do. I, I understand clearly God's word. I, I understand. Look, I don't, I've gone beyond understanding right and wrong. I feel what's right and wrong. You have gone beyond knowing what's right and wrong. You feel what's right and wrong. You have a conviction. Your stomach turns when you get ready to do wrong. Your mind begins to fight when you get ready to go wrong. There's some, that's a struggle in you. So that you will not what? Stumble. Does that make sense yet? Amen. Uh, uh, it's, the, it's that rod or the staff of the Lord with the hook on it. That when you get ready to go outside the path, you, you feel a little tug on your neck. But you know the thing about that thing, see, I, I, I love how God is. That, that thing is shaped like a cane, like the, the cane that the noops were, but they, but they, but they long. But, but notice how it's made. It's made in a way where it hooked you, but it's not a full circle. So if you have any kind of spirit other than a sheep, then all you got to do is buck and get out of it. See, you can't hook a goat with the same thing you hook a sheep with. Because if you hook a goat and begin to pull him, once he feels the resistance of the pool, he begin to buck. And he frees himself from the open end of the staff. Wow. But when a sheep feels the tug, a sheep don't buck. He just come along with what's tugging him. Yeah. And that's how God does. God can yank you out of your skin and you'll be laying there with your top epidermis and you'll be standing there pink if that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. But that's not the kind of God we serve. We serve the kind of God that just does this. And if you go come on, you come on. Is that all right to say? But look at this. The confidence is saying, I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to hear my prayer. Listen, when, when your steps are in the order of the Lord, that's a confidence about calling on him. You know, it's a lot of people praying, but it's very few people that's praying to God. Because, but I ain't heard his neck, did <laughs> Because the word is teaching us that it's a lot of people praying, but God ain't hearing everybody. He ain't hearing everybody. He's not hearing everybody. And then you have to go back and re-examine yourself and say, I've been praying a certain prayer for a long time. Am I in step with the Lord? Because God is not the kind of God that ignore his people. Amen, somebody. Amen. Let's go. Oh, yeah. I will hasten. Look, 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 listen, listen. I will have. Psalm 119, 58 through 60. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. God, I have sought your face. I ain't looking for your blessing. I'm not. I haven't sought your hand. But I have sought your face. In other words, I'm trying to get to know God not for what he can give me and do for me. But I'm trying to get to know God to recognize who he is. Because if somebody just stick something out of, they, out of a curtain every time you show up and give you some money when you go there, then you never know who's really giving it to you. And if you are in it just to get what that hand is giving you, you would never care what's behind the curtain. But God is looking for people who is seeking his face. You're trying to know who he is. You recognize and you know people according to their face. And you 
continue to pursue God because God says at this point here on earth, no man has seen my face and lived. So it's a constant pursuit to find his face and see his face because he don't make his face easy to see. So you got this term, you got to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and going. On. But when you seek his hand only, once you get what you're trying to get out of his hand, then you stop following. But people who are in step with God, when he gives you that blessing, you say thank you. And then you continue on. We'll get there in a minute. Yes. You continue on this step. I have sought your face with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways. And now I have turned my step towards your statue. I have considered how I'm living. People are not preaching this. People are not teaching this. It, you know, you all would love for me to rhyme and rap, holler and scream, jump around on one leg, but listen, it's a time for now for people to consider their ways. Yeah. Go home and think about what am I doing that's wrong? And turn from the way that I'm going and turn back towards the command and the statutes of God. That's what this is all about. Yeah, right. yeah. That's, that's, that's the reason why God is allowing people to come in churches and blow everybody up. Because his thing is, is that if everybody is doing what they're supposed to do, they get they just get blow up, blew up into glory. Amen. They don't they don't get blew up. They don't, you're not gonna get shortchanged when you get took out of here. Matter of fact, you almost want to come back and thank the person that detonated or detonated the blunt, the bone. You almost want to go back and thank the person that took you out of this world so that you can get into glory. Yeah, yeah. But this is the kind of word that God has given that people have to consider their ways. It's the simple things that God expects you to change first because it's so much that we have to change. Yeah, yeah. But God said, I'm looking for just a small, I'm just, it's just time for somebody to stop cussing. It ain't cute no more. Why isn't it cute? It ain't cute because somebody would kill you in prayer service. That's why it's not cute. It's not cute anymore because somebody will come into your kid's classroom and kill everybody in the classroom. And all you thought it was was a regular day. But this is the time that we're living in. This is the time that we're living in. We're living in a time now where somebody will go off and win a football or basketball game and some fool so mad his team lost. He blew the whole bus. Yeah, yeah. Kill all the whole team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's how crazy things have gotten. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how bad things have gotten. Yeah. And God is not a small God. He ain't no little bit of God when he, oh, he did that. He's not coming in after the fact. It's just like Judas with Jesus. The world is just playing into God's big plan. And we have to prepare ourselves yeah. yes. to go where we have to go when God's plan plays out. Yeah. We got to consider our ways. Amen. Everybody that's having sex that shouldn't be, they got to sit down and consider. I'm, 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 I'm sinning. And I got to go in the right direction. Everybody that's gay got to sit there and say, I've been gay long enough. I got to straighten up and do what I got to do now. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Everybody who's doing whatever that they shouldn't be doing. Is there come a time now when singing ain't cute no more? And I told my wife before I came out and she said, what's wrong with you in the zone? I said, no, it's just getting to the point where before I go out, it's like, it's like, I told Aunt somebody, I say, it's like I'm literally trying to preach somebody out of the gates of hell because the time is so close. And it's just, it'd be heavy before you get up here. It's like a, it's just a burden on you because you know, I know that somebody gonna leave here and ain't gonna consider a way. Somebody gonna go right back home to shacking, go right back home to cussing, go right back home to having sex and with somebody, go right back to doing whatever they want to do. And way they behind have to leave this world, somebody have to sit up here and comfort folks and, and try to preach something, to encourage somebody else because there's a question mark there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On where they really go. And I'm just not that kind of pastor that can give you two scriptures, a good nursery rhyme, and make it sound good, and go home and eat chicken, white meat. 
I, my wife and kids can contest. I do everything in my power to try to live according. And I feel like it's only fair for me to make sure that you all doing everything in y'all power to live accordingly also. It's not going to do me any good to be around the throne looking for my church members. Amen? And you all are in another, a different party than what I'm in. No, no, no. My goal is for all of us to be around the throne of God. All of us. And that's why the word is like it is. So I've turned my steps to your statutes. I will hasten and not delay to obey your commands. It, people dragging their feet on obeying God. Yeah. I can't stand dragging their feet. I think I hit my boy once or twice and was finna hit him again because he keep dragging his feet when we ask him to do something. And as parents, how many parents I got there? Raise your hand real so I can see what, who I'm talking to. As parents, how did you feel when you asked your kids to do something? And they drag their feet doing it. Amen. They take their time. You tell them that morning, wash them dishes. And that night, the dish is still in the sink. How many parents was upset about that? And that's how God is feeling now. I'm telling you to do something. I'm telling you to clean up something. And when I come back the next night, you, it's some stuff in your life still ain't clean and washed yet. And it has to be a frustration level there. He has to be feeling, didn't I tell you to clean this up two days ago? And I come here and this is still dirty in your life. But the word of God says we got to make haste and we got to not delay in obeying what he didn't say. Proverbs 14 and 15 says, the simple believes anything, but the prudent gives thoughts to their step. Prudent, wise people. The simple-minded believe anything. The simple-minded, the simple-minded take the sign of God and make it a homosexual sign. The rainbow is God's covenant sign that he would not destroy the earth with water anymore, but he shall destroy it with fire. And all of them take that sign and say, oh, this is the homosexual sign. No, baby, that's the sign of judgment. That's the sign that God says that, oh, I won't destroy it with water no more. Oh, but I will destroy it with fire. And the simple-minded believes that, oh, Fame! 
faith comes by hearing. And hearing has to come by the word of God. But the word was God, and the word was right there with blind Bartimaeus. And he heard Jesus in his vicinity. But blind Bartimaeus felt like a lot of us feel in this day and time. Because Jesus was not coming to see blind Bartimaeus. Jesus was only passing by him. And how many people in here feel like Jesus sometimes pass by you? And pass by your situation and go by uh, to the next man's situation. Anybody ever been around somebody that got blessed with something that you was waiting on? Anybody ever saw somebody get a good man that you thought that you was going to have by now? Anybody ever seen somebody marry a good woman that you thought that God would have blessed you with? Anybody felt like Jesus had passed you by? Let me tell you something. The good thing about Jesus passing by by the means was the fact that he was in his area. And I want you to know that Jesus say, understand something. I'm going to always be in your area, even to the end of this earth. And Bartimaeus began to cry out to Jesus. And it is somehow when you begin to cry out to Jesus, people around you start trying to tell you to shut up about crying out. Somebody told Bartimaeus to hold up on what he was hollering. Amen. Because he began to holler out for Jesus. For Jesus to have mercy on him. I'm going somewhere. And people began to tell him, man, don't be crying out about no Jesus and praying up in here. Uh, we not no praying fraternity. Uh, we not no praying school. Uh, no praying team. Uh, leave that Jesus mess out there for the church folks. Uh, but Bartimaeus say, no, nah, if Jesus is in my area, I'm going to cry out to him because he's the only one that can help me. And the Bible says that Jesus heard Bartimaeus uh, and asked him, what can I do for you? Uh, and Bartimaeus probably figured in his mind that you're supposed to be Jesus. Uh, you got to know that I'm blind and that I cannot see. Uh, and I want you to understand something that God know exactly what you need. And he know exactly what you're going through, but sometimes he be rhetorical in his questions, and he just wants you to ask for what you need, because the Bible teaches us that a lot of us have not, because we ask not, and it's time for somebody in this church to have enough faith to begin to ask Jesus for what you need today. You need to ask Jesus for what you're going through today. You got to have enough faith to stand up and ask God, uh, because if you don't have faith, uh, you won't ask God, uh, because you won't believe that he's able to give it to you. But Bartimaeus said, God, I want to see. Give me my sight. And I want you to know that Jesus said uh, that your faith has made you whole. And immediately, not tomorrow, not later on that night, but immediately, but that's not the end of my story because Jesus Christ put Bartimaeus in the same situation that he has put all of us in he, he told Bartimaeus to go that way uh, now that you can receive what you wanted from me uh, go on about your business uh, but Bartimaeus said I didn't come for just the healing but I came for the healing I'm not about to go my way uh, but I'm going That you can't just look for Jesus for your healing, but you got to look for the healer himself. Too many people want the blessing when we ought to be looking for the blessing. You can't stop at what he do for you, but you got to follow him like God means. My Bible in Mark chapter 10 ended with this. It says that immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus in the way. In other words, he did not go his own way. But after his healing, his steps became ordered. You got to understand somebody that your steps are ordered after Jesus do what he's going to do for you. 
Say, you a good man. Yes. 